At Open Muscle, we created the OM12 bracelet and LASK5 labeler for people interested in exploring prosthetic technology and machine learning applications. While these devices aren't intended as actual prosthetic sensors, they serve as a valuable educational tools to help users understand the fundamentals of muscle sensing and machine learning in a hands-on way. The OM12 bracelet consists of six cells, three with ESP32 C3 microcontrollers and three with batteries and power management circuits. Each cell includes two hall sensors and a keyboard switch to capture muscle movements. The goal of OM12 is not to function as a prosthetic device, but to provide users with a practical understanding of muscle sensing, data capture, and machine learning. Once assembled, the cells are positioned on a Velcro bracelet attached around the forearm to detect muscle pressure changes, providing an entry point to machine learning applications and sensor technology. We're gonna start off with the surface mounted components for the three power management cells. These are the ones where the batteries are connected. There are three major components. There's a latch switch mechanism that will power on and off all three devices. There is also a LDO, which converts the battery voltage down to 3.3 volts. And then finally, we have a charging circuit of an LTC of 4054. Now, this is a prototype version of the PCBs, and you do have to wire the 5 volts separately from the actual VBUS from the ESP32C3. But again, I'm just wanting to go over briefly how this device is manufactured in this current version. So I'm using an actual iron to do the solder reflow. And here I am actually attaching the JST links to each of the cells. So since there's one microcontroller for every two cells, we need to send over two of the analog signals and then we have to power, of course, the other device. And that's accomplished with four different wires. And then the buttons that handle the power on mechanism, those are two separate wires. So now, I'm finishing up just attaching all of the hall sensors on the three boards that manage the power. And I can go on to solder the ESP32C3s. Now these are super mini dev boards, uh, pretty inexpensive, about $2 on AliExpress. Um, they're a powerhouse, they actually have two cores on the inside, 240 megahertz, um, pretty fast for our use. It is the problem that there are three of them. It makes it a little bit cumbersome to actually update the code, but I've been working on an over the air update MicroPython package that allows us to do that pretty easily. So after we got most of these soldered on, we do want to test them to make sure that the ESP32s can be flashed with MicroPython. You might want to do this beforehand because you do not want to you do not want to ruin a board, and that can happen because some of these dev boards uh, do come from the factory, um, sometimes not working. It's like one in twelve in my experience, or maybe one in twenty, uh, but it's still worth note. So now we're putting the linear Hall effect sensors on each of the boards. We've already done that for the power management cells, so now we're adding them on the actual microcontroller boards. So the final step is just to solder these together, and what we're going to be left with is a board that uh, there's two cells that are linked together, and then there's six cells total that make up the bracelet. So now I'm just pushing the Hall effect sensors to make sure they're fitting into that square hole to be as close to the magnet as possible. And now this is the female JST jumpers that we're just adding on here. Now the label mechanism is based off of an ESP32 S3. Um, this this dev board actually includes a battery plus and minus input inside of it. So it takes care of a lot of our work for us. So pretty much all we need to do is put on the Hall effect sensors, the microcontroller, the screen, a couple of capacitors for each of the Hall sensors, four buttons, and just a switch. Now here I'm just soldering on the screen, getting it all lined up. There are also some footprints for some surface mounted components that we can actually change those out if we were to use a different microcontroller, but that's uh, not, a cop uh, not a topic for this conversation. Um, this is again a dev board and I'm working on refining it, but I wanted to upload this version as soon as possible so people can 
replicate the work if they are so interested. So here I'm actually putting together the jumper cables for the joystick, which allows us to get some control over the thumb. Now in other versions, I've actually had a piston for the thumb, but right now I'm just interested in doing some data capture. That way I can actually focus my attention on the machine learning aspect. Now this is of course supervised machine learning that we're using. The bracelet's gonna be detecting the muscle contractions in the forearm, and then this is going to be labeling the system. So again, you're gonna be using this on a person with an intact arm or with an intact hand, but this system could be adopted for someone that actually had missing one hand. You would actually train using the label system on the opposite hand and ask them to mirror both motions. Again, these are just tools I needed to test some of my theories with machine learning when it comes to prosthetic sensor technologies, and I wanted to give those out as open source and open hardware in case they might be helpful for anyone else out there. Now I plan on rapidly prototyping these ad nauseum to infinity uh, until they reach a spot in which they can actually be used for commercial use. Again, everything that I do is open source and open hardware um, for the research and development and the hopes that this can help someone else uh, that is pursuing a similar mission. And that's what I love about open source technology and open hardware is that you can really collaborate with people all around the world um, and it's just it's an exciting time to be alive. So here we have one unit with the joystick, one unit without, and yeah, I'm just kind of showing off the surface mounted components that are required to make some of these boards, um, which those are all in the build of materials. So that comes to the conclusion of the build for this open muscle sensor band and open muscle labeler for the version one PCBs. So if you have any questions, please reach out to the GitHub, please reach out via Discord, please go to openmuscle.org. You can find us on Twitter, you can find us um, on YouTube. I appreciate anyone that's interested in this project. Please reach out to me. I try to help people as much as I can in my free time. And uh, yeah, uh, don't be shy. Um, this is something I'm passionate about. And if you've watched this video to the end, uh, it seems that you are passionate as well. So as always, let's see if we can make a positive difference in this world. Till next time. Thank you.